Yo, what's good everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be breaking down this NHL DFS slate for Thursday, October 20th. We got ourselves a beautiful 12-game slate here tonight, where I'm going to go through a couple of my favorite line stacks, some of my favorite individual plays, and some of my favorite low-priced options, and then we'll wrap up the video by talking a little prize picks. With that being said, let's dive into my spreadsheet here. And like we always do, we're going to kick things off here in the top left-hand corner with those highest implied game totals. Right now, as I record this morning, 11 of these 12 games are sitting at an implied total of 6.5 goals. So definitely some high-scoring shootout potential on this 12-game slate. And then we got that game between the Devils and Islanders, currently sitting at 6 goals. I also got the Vegas odds listed behind me there, so you can see who's favored to win tonight. With that being said, let's dive into a couple of my favorite line stacks here. Now, I do want to mention there is a lot to love about the forward position on this 12-game slate. Not really thrilled about the defenseman position, I'll talk about that later, but when it comes to the forwards, there's a number of different routes that we could go. Again, 11 of these games coming in with an implied total of 6.5 goals, a lot of high-scoring shootout potential. There's a lot to love about not only individual forwards, but line stacking as well. And so these are two line stacks that stuck out to me, but I do believe there's a number of different routes that we could go here tonight. The first one that I had here is that first line for the New York Rangers. We got Zibanejad centering Kreider and Kak. This first line has been very good for the Rangers to start the year, combining for 8 goals, 5 assists, 13 points in their first 4 games. Now Mika himself has been very good. Kreider's been good as well, but only has 2 goals, 1 assist through 4 games. However, I'm looking at the expected goals here across the NHL right now, and Kreider and Zibanejad lead the entire NHL right now through the first week of the season. And Capo Caco here, very affordable at $3,600, playing about 15 minutes per night. And it looks like both him and Alexis Lafreniere have already taken the next step in their career this year. I know it's early, but both of those guys do look much better compared to previous seasons. Now you're going to see Zabanajad and Kreider play up on the number one power play. Kako does play down on the second. But again, these guys are logging big minutes together five on five. Now you're going to notice the notes just changed. I accidentally put that they were playing the Anaheim Ducks here tonight. That's who they played last game, and while that would have been a great matchup once again, they still have a very good matchup at home here against the San Jose Sharks, who are 0-5 to start the season and are allowing close to four goals per game. I apologize for that mix-up, folks. Now I'm going to get into this line with Evgeny Malkin. You're going to notice the notes are going to change back, but once we get down to Patrice Bergeron on the individual plays... We're going to get back on track here, so apologies for that, everyone. And then another line that I like here tonight is that second line for the Pittsburgh Penguins. We got Malkin centering Zucker and Brian Rust. Again, we're just one week into the NHL season, but this line has been fantastic for Pittsburgh in their first three games. They actually lead the entire NHL right now and expected goals for percentage at 85.1%. That is absolutely ridiculous, and they lead the entire league in expected goals as well, which makes sense when you're at 85.1%. Malkin looks very, very good, looks healthy. I don't want to say he looks like old Evgeny Malkin, because back in those days when Gino turned it on, he was one of, if not the best player in the NHL, but he does look significantly better compared to last year. Brian Rust looks really good as well, and Jason Zucker, just like Capo Caco, very affordable here at $3,300 playing about 15, 16 plus minutes per night, and getting time on that second power play, while Gino and Rust here get time on the number one power play. Now, folks, before we dive into some of my favorite individual plays here, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. And for those of you who are on Discord, make sure you join the Discord channel as well. I'm just going to throw a logo up there again, but if you want to join it, there's a link in the description below. All right, now diving into these individual plays here, we're going to kick it off with the forwards. And like I said, there's just a lot to love about the forward position here tonight. You got McDavid on the slate, Crosby, Matthews, Pasternak, who's off to a hot start. So we can roster any one of those guys, right? They're the best players in the NHL. Doesn't matter who the opponent is. More nights than not, they're going to have a successful night. But I wanted to highlight Kirill Kaprizov here of the Minnesota Wild, who are really struggling to start the season. 
but Kirill's been good himself. He's now got three goals, to assist, five points in his team's first three games, has four plus shots in every game as well, and a good matchup here tonight against the Vancouver Canucks as the Minnesota Wild look to seek their first win. Now Kaprizov should play about 21 plus minutes here tonight, play on that first line, and play on the number one power play. The next guy I got there then is Patrice Bergeron. So now we're back on track here, folks. You notice the notes in the top right-hand corner. I got that right. I was looking at this, I go, wait, how are the Boston Bruins playing the Anaheim Ducks when the New York Rangers are playing the Anaheim Ducks? But again, New York played Anaheim last game, beat them up for what it's worth. Uh, Igor didn't look great in that game, but he's still one of the best goaltenders, if not the best goaltender in the NHL. Let's get back on track here, talk about Patrice Bergeron, who obviously has a very good matchup against the Anaheim Ducks, who are allowing 5.25 goals per game through their first four games, as you obviously saw earlier. Now, I just name-dropped David Posternock as well. He's very expensive, third most expensive player on this slate, but off to a really good start. If you want to save some money off of Pasta, I like Bergeron here as well at $7,000. Very good to start the year himself. Three goals, three assists, six points in his first four games. Loves to shoot the puck, this guy. Plays on the first line and plays on the number one power play. Should log about 17, 18 plus minutes here tonight. But yeah, getting back on track here now. For what it's worth, the Bruins have a great matchup against these Ducks. I then got Elias Pettersson there of the Vancouver Canucks. If you remember last year, he came into the season battling some contract issues. Once he got those resolved, he started the season very slow but started to find his game again towards the end of the season. It looks like he's carried that into this season. He's now got three goals, three assists, six points in his team's first four games. Has three plus shots on net in every single game as well, and just looks a lot more confident with the puck on his stick. Now you're gonna see him play on that second line, but play up on the number one power play. Should log about 18 plus minutes here tonight in a very good matchup against the Minnesota Wild, who have struggled defensively with goaltending, just don't look like a very good team in general to start the year. I talked about how bad the Anaheim Ducks have been defensively. Minnesota's even been worse, allowing 6.67 goals per game through their team's first three games. Another guy sitting with a great matchup here tonight is Cole Caulfield of the Montreal Canadiens, as they're set to take on the Arizona Coyotes at home, who are again one of the worst teams in the NHL. Yeah, they just beat the Toronto Maple Leafs last game, but this seems like a great spot for them to get back to their horrible defensive ways. A team that's allowed 4.67 goals per game through their first three games. The third most in the NHL just behind the Anaheim Ducks and the Minnesota Wild. But Caulfield looks good, kind of picking up that confidence that he found towards the end of last season once Marty St. Louis took over as the head coach. He's now got three goals, one assist, four points in his first four games. And he's got four plus shots on net and three of four games as well. He's a shooter. He's got a fantastic shot. If you haven't seen it, go watch some of his goals. But that's what we want out of Caulfield. If he's shooting the puck like that, he's going to find the score sheet more times than not. Now, I mentioned this the other day. Elias Lindholm, I thought, was too cheap in the low 5K range. Now he gets a price reduction here at $4,900. This is a guy who floated in the low 6K range all of last year. And look, I understand Johnny Gaudreau is out of there, no Matthew Kachuk, but you bring in one of the best passers in the NHL and Jonathan Duberdo and pretty good right wing and Tyler Toffoli. Uh, he's got some good line mates still, so I'm not really concerned about that. Plays on the first line, plays on the number one power play, does have two goals in his team's first three games. So yeah, $4,900 is way too cheap in my opinion, and does have a solid matchup at home here against the Buffalo Sabres. And then I got Jonathan Marcheseau there as well of the Vegas Golden Knights, who I believe is too cheap himself, could easily be priced in the mid 5k range, but we're getting him at a discount and I'll take advantage of that. He does play down on the third line right now, but still getting time on that number two power play. Should log about 15, 16 plus minutes here tonight, and has three goals in his team's first four games. A guy who's got 15, 20 plus DraftKings point ups and could definitely smash his value at this price in what should be a good matchup here tonight at home against the Winnipeg Jets, who are starting the season on the road, playing on back-to-back -back nights here, just played in Colorado last night, and ended up winning that game in overtime. Then you got to travel into Vegas, 
same night. You can imagine that those guys are probably pretty fatigued, and Vegas has looked very good under Bruce Cassidy starting the season. 4-0. Now, moving over here to the defensemen, and as I mentioned earlier, there is a lot to love about the forwards on this 12-game slate. I think there's so many different directions that we could go. Again, 11 of these games coming in with an implied total of 6.5 goals. Yeah, we're going to see some high-scoring games here tonight. But when it comes to the defensemen, honestly, just not in love with how they're priced on this slate. I guess I don't mind spending up for some of these guys, but I just initially here for seeing myself spending down at the defenseman position, paying up for forwards and goaltenders. If I got money laying around, yeah, I'll spend up on a defenseman, but I'm not going to force myself to do that. I do really like the price here, though, for Noah Dobson of the New York Islanders. Yeah, I mentioned this a handful of times, what seems like already this year, this guy was solid his rookie year, improved immensely last year, and looks like he's taken the next step this year as well. He's now got two goals, two assists, four points in his first three games, five plus shots on net in two of those games, hitting 11 and a half DraftKings points in every game as well, and 20 plus DraftKings points in two of those games. A guy who's going to play about 20 plus minutes here tonight, plays on his team's number one power play, and gets time on the penalty kill too. Next, I got Quinn Hughes there of the Vancouver Canucks, and this just comes down to the matchup. Like I said, Minnesota allowing over six goals per game in their first three games. Vancouver has not struggled to score goals themselves. You know, maybe stack up that number one power play a little bit and attack this Minnesota penalty kill. Again, small sample size, but they're just hitting at a 69% rate. That is not very good on the penalty kill. So I don't mind targeting, like I said, that number one power play for Vancouver in general. Hughes now has four assists through his team's first four games, and I do like the way that he's shooting the puck. He has at least two plus shots in every game, and three plus in two of those games. Now, one guy I thought that was mispriced on the defensive side of things was Drew Doughty of the Los Angeles Kings, and I understand he only has one goal, one assist, two points in his first five games, but this guy legit logs like 27 plus minutes per night, plays on the number one power play, plays on the penalty kill, and can really rack up DraftKings points in a number of different ways. So yeah, considering the ice time, the opportunity he has, $4,600 is just too cheap in my opinion. Now, one of the few areas the Minnesota Wild have found success this year is on their power play, scoring at a 43% rate in their first three games. Again, a small sample size, right? I don't want to sound like a broken record, but that's the one area they have found success. Part of that reason is due to Kalen Addison, who has been very good on the blue line running that number one power play. He now has four assists in three games. Three of those assists have come on the power play. So maybe you stack him up with someone like Kuro Kaprizov, who they look to shoot on that number one power play. He can clearly get on the score sheet and rack up goals. And Addison here is very cheap at $3,000. So that's primarily what you're targeting, is Minnesota getting on the power play three, four plus times here tonight. But considering the price tag, he has some nice upside. And then I got a couple of goaltenders here for you. Two guys in the 7K range. Goalies who are playing at home and favorites at home for the that matter. Logan Thompson and Ilya Sorokin. Now again, 12 game slate, number of different goalies that I do like, but I like the price tags and how these guys have played so far this year. First being Logan Thompson of the Vegas Golden Knights, as I mentioned earlier, Bruce Cassidy has these guys right right now, and Thompson's been a big part of that. Starting the year 3-0, with the goals allowed average of 2.03, and a save percentage of .938, averaging 20.5 DraftKings points per game, and again, catching this Winnipeg Jets team here at home tonight, who are playing on back-to-back -back nights after winning in Colorado last night. And then we got Ilya Sorokin there of the New York Islanders, playing at home against the New Jersey Devils. And I talked about him the other day, and it ended up being Semyon Varlamov who started and looked pretty damn good himself in that game. But I look back to last year, Sorokin was a beast at home. Playing on a struggling Islanders team, he's played well so far in his first two home games as well. And although he is just 1-1, one one, he's got a goals allowed average of 1.52 and a save percentage of .941 hard to ignore those numbers. And as always, we're going to wrap up this spreadsheet here with three low-priced options or sub-4K forward plays. First guy I got there is Josh Norris of the Ottawa Senators, currently playing on that second line in number one power play, centering Alex Debrinkit and Claude Giroux. 
Two pretty damn good wingers, if you ask me. Now, he just has one assist through his team's first three games, but this is a guy who had 35 goals and 20 assists last year, 55 points in 66 games, and a guy who floated in the high 5K range, low 6K range all year last year. We're getting him at a massive discount here at $3,900. Next, I got Alexis Lafreniere there of the New York Rangers, who I kind of name-dropped earlier when I was talking about that first line for the Rangers, and more specifically, Capo Caco. Let's not forget, Lafreniere was a first overall pick. Kako was a second overall pick. You know, these guys have a lot of expectations for them. And while they didn't really perform up to par in their first couple of seasons, like I said, they've kind of taken that next step this year. I love the way that Lafreniere is playing on that second line right now with Artemi Panarin and Vincent Trocek. Plays on the number two power play as well. He's now got one goal, two assists, three points in his first four games. He's also third on the team in expected goals. I love the way he's been shooting the puck. And then we got to go back to Gabriel Velarde here of the Los Angeles Kings. Ride him out while he's hot. Playing on that third line right now and got bumped up to the number one power play. The kid has four goals, three assists, seven points in his first five games. And while his price is steadily coming up, he's still very cheap here at 3200 And then to wrap up this video here, want to talk a little prize picks with you guys. Now, I am a little disappointed here on this 12-game slate. I thought I would have had a lot of picks to look through this morning. But unfortunately, they only have props out right now for three of these games. You see, they don't even have point props out, just shots on goal, goals allowed first eight minutes, and goals allowed in first ten minutes. Now, there's a couple that are sticking out to me. I think Vincent Trocek here looks nice. We take a look at his game log here with the New York Rangers. He's definitely shooting the puck, and it makes sense because Artemi Panarin on that second line is a natural playmaker, getting the puck to Vincent Trocek and Alexis Lafreniere, and both of those guys have become shooter so I don't mind that at all but it looks like I'm gonna have to wait that out wait for the rest of these picks to come out at least and then like we've done all of last year and this year I'll let you know my final picks in a comment below on this video and I'll be sure to pin that comment as well now for those of you who have not signed up for prize picks yet but want to get in on this action and look you don't have to just play NHL you could play NBA we got MLB here if you're into the PGA or college football side of things there's a number of different routes and picks that you can choose from. You can mix and match different sports as well. Prize Picks allows you to get very unique with your player slips. Now, if you have not signed up yet and want to get in on this action, I got a promo code that you should definitely take advantage of. When you're signing up, use my promo code GRIFF. G-R-I-F-F, -F, and prize picks will give you all the way up to a $100 match deposit. Now again, you don't have to put 100 bucks in. You want to put in 50, they'll match 50. You want to put in 20, they'll match 20. They'll match anything up to $100. Again, as long as you're using my promo code GRIFF, G-R-I-F-F, -F, upon signing up. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap up this video here for today. As always, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch the content here on this channel. If you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. Let's have ourselves a great day here, folks. Let's win some money on this 12-game slate. In the meantime, I'm out of here.